and good morning today is 9th of october 2000 and, uh, 2020 and my name is farhan mazar right now i'm with the 10 cambridge uh, class and the subject we are studying is physics 5054 and today's task is to do the mcqs of the topic of night we are working on the summer 2005 paper and uh, we were in the middle of that a uh, question and the light went on we are in pakistan so the load shedding is normal so but the light is back again so due to that our video was uh, disrupted so let's see so we were on this question question number 23 and uh, we were i was telling you that uh, the d is the right choice if you want a clear image on the screen uh, if you want a clear image on the screen the lens uh, you should use a lens which has a longer wavelength a longer focal length sorry and if the longer focal length these light rays will be there are chances that they will intersect each other on the screen another method can be move the screen towards the lens but that option is not given in the given options and one more thing the a option uh, that is wrong perfectly wrong but i told you that is very difficult to uh, uh, decide that the a is wrong because you should know and you should remember when we made those diagrams of the image formation in the convex lens you should remember this point as you move the object closer to the lens step by step as you move the object closer to the lens you know the image was going away from the lens so if you move the object away from the lens the image will come near the lens so there is no chance for a to be correct so a is wrong so d is the right choice for question number 23 summer 2006 paper we are right now in the summer 2006 paper so uh you understand this question yes sir okay so we are moving to the next question that is question number 24 on your screen this question uh is easy but but uh is the question on the dispersion of light okay the question on the dispersion of light he says light rays are deviated by a prism the deviation angle d is measured for light rays of different frequency including blue light and red light which graph is correct you remember when the white light passes through the prism that here we have a band of colors and the order of that the band of colors i told you in the class lecture the code word for that thing is roy g bim r o y g b i b the code word is roy g bim okay red orange yellow green blue indigo violet okay and we learned another thing in that lecture that when uh if you move in that color band downward from red to violet the wavelength uh will decrease and the frequency will increase so the frequency of the of the blue should be more than the frequency of the red the frequency of the blue should be more than the frequency of the red and the blue should deviate more than the red so the blue color should have a larger frequency than the frequency of the red and the blue should have larger deviation because uh, when the light emerges from th this uh, prism uh, we will have red then orange then yellow then green then blue then indigo then violet so the blue have more deviation the angle of deviation for the blue is more than the angle of deviation of the red because the blue is below the red in that band of colors spectrum so 
the blue should have higher frequency and the blue should have higher angle of deviation. If you pay little attention to these graphs, what these graphs are? Look at these graphs. On the uh, y-axis, the angle of deviation is shown and on the x-axis, the frequency is shown. And I am telling you again and again that the blue will have more frequency than the red and the blue will have more deviation than the red have. A, sir. So in the A, the frequency of the, this is the axis for the frequency. Here the frequency of the blue is less than the frequency of the red. So A cannot be the choice. It's D, sir. It's D, yes, D. Look at the blue color. This is the graph, D, for blue color. The frequency is here, which is more than the red. And the angle of deviation is here. So let me take this to the, let me take this there so you can understand how I'm deciding. Let me take this diagram to the paint. So you can see how do I this whole thing. Uh, so we have so for the red color, okay. So with the one which is good, let me draw there. Okay, from red I go there, and from there this is for red. Okay, for blue. Want to change color for blue? Let me go to the graph. Okay. Okay. And so the frequency of blue is here, which is more than the red, and the angle of that de the deviation. You can see the blue deviation is more. The red deviation is here, which is less. So what is the choice? D. D is the right choice. It's a little tricky question. Okay. So we have done two, three questions on the topic of light from the summer 2006 paper. And I hope that you have understood this. Okay, so sir? let's move to the next. Sir, can you yes. please explain to why A is not the right option? Yes, sir. Why A is not the right option? Let me open that. Okay, so here we come. A. Uh, the blue is here. Okay, so let me draw a line. So from here, go to this graph. Okay. <laughs> It's little. Okay, now I'm going to draw for red. Okay, from red, go to the graph. Okay. And from here, go to the Blue. This is for point for the blue. The frequency of the blue here is less than the frequency of the red. That is wrong. The blue have more frequency than the. You see? Let me show you. Red. Roy. Roy. G. Roy G. This is the path, that is the code word. Roy G. Biv. Of the order of the colors in the spectrum. If you move downward, the frequency increases. 
the blue is below red this here its frequency is more than the frequency of the red but in that graph a the blue have less frequency than the red so that's why a is not the answer do you understand Yes, sir. Can I move to the next question? Yes, sir. Okay, the summer two thousand and seven paper is on your screen right now, and we are doing the MCQs on the topic of light. The topic of light moves the questions moves slowly because we have to do the construction on them. So that's why they go slow. And okay, here we go, sir. Yes. हमने 2006 के सर दो क्वेश्चंस किए ना. Yes, we are on working only on the topic of light. Okay sir. The diagram shows a child using it's a 2007 paper, summer 2007 paper. We are only working on the topic of light. The diagram shows a child using a periscope to look at an object on the other side of a wall. the diagram shows a correctly drawn ray of light from the object if you have studied your textbook periscope is used and it uses plane mirrors and sometimes the periscope also uses uh, you know uh, prisms also but here i think they are using mirrors so from the object the light will come from the object the light will come from this mirror let me increase the size so i can show you correct diagram the rest of the diagram is wrong let me first explain you the right one from the object the light ray should come in the periscope here you have put a mirror from this mirror it should be reflected and then again here we have put a mirror and from this mirror the light will be reflected and it will go into the eye of the observer so c is the right choice so now let's see why the d is not the right choice because in the d the light is coming out of the observer's eye the light do not come out of the observer's eye the light comes from the object so d is wrong c is the right answer okay let's see why a is not the answer you see if i will draw here from the light came from the object reflected from the mirror reflected from the mirror again and when into the eye of the observer that's the same theory which i talked about in the option c but why the a is not the right choice let me show you let me show you why i'm not taking a as a right choice okay why i rejected a i will only work on a and you can do the same work with the c also and decide why a that's not the right answer why that is the right answer or why a is not the right answer so i'm going to prove that the a is not the right answer theoretically it's looking good that from the object the light is coming the light reflected from a mirror then again reflected from a mirror and went into observer's eye so everything looks good but there is something wrong let me show you what is wrong okay here the light reflected so here draw a normal so this is normal normal makes 90 degree angle with the surface of the glass okay and if you look at this diagram and let me draw a normal result my so i'm trying to draw a normal here with the mirror okay normal makes 90 degree angle okay. so if you will be walking on a hard copy of this paper and when you will draw these normals 
and then you will check the angle of incidence and angle of reflection what is the angle of incidence here this is the angle of incidence and what is the angle of reflection here this is the angle of reflection the angle of incidence here is this and angle of reflection here is this you will measure them actually measure them and you will find that these angle of incidence and angle of reflection uh, they are equal to each other or they are not equal to each other okay let me go to the figure c let me bring that figure also uh, this Uh, let's do the same thing again on the this. When you will draw a normal here, clearly, clearly, and you have to actually draw the normal, and you have to measure the angle of incidence and angle of reflection. If you trust me, I am telling you that if you draw the angle uh, normal here, here you will draw normal. And then measure the angle of incidence and angle of reflection, they will be exactly equal in the C diagram. But when you will do the same procedure for the figure A, the angle of incidence and angle of reflection will be different from each other. That's why I rejected the figure A. So the right option is C. Do you understand? Do you understand yes. this? Yes, sir. And you have a hard copy of this paper in front of you. Then you have to actually draw the normals. And with the help of the protector, you have to measure the angle of distance and angle of reflection. The figure A and the C both can be the answer. But when you will measure the angle of distance and angle of reflection in the figure A, they will be not equal to each other. That's why we will reject the figure A. And in the figure C, the angle of incidence and angle of reflection will be equal to each other. That's why we will select this. Okay. Understand? Okay. Gee, it's not that uh, straightforward. Okay. Question number 21. Summer 2007 paper. What happens to the light as it passes from glass into air? What happens to the light as it passes from glass into air? When it moves from glass into air, the speed will increase. The speed of the light in the air is more than the speed of the light in the glass. So the speed should increase. And one thing which we have not yet studied, the relationship between the speed and the wavelength. Whatever happens with the speed, the same thing happens with the wavelength. Okay, frequency yeah. do not change. You have not yet studied the chapter of waves, but I can tell you when the light will enter from glass into air, its speed will increase, its wavelength will increase, but the frequency will remain unchanged, a very famous concept. But this is you will learn in the chapter of waves. So what is the best choice from here? D, sir. D is the right choice. So D is the choice. Okay. So these were the questions on the topic of the light. Question number 21, 20. And I think uh, there were just two questions from the summer 2007 paper. So hopefully you have understood them. And let me go to the next. And uh, the next question on your screen is from summer 2008. Summer 2008. And we are working on the amplitude of the light, the reflection and refraction of the light. Okay. Okay. So we come. Here comes the next question. 
summer 2008. Question number 22. A ray of red light enters a semicircular glass top normal to the curved surface. Which diagram correctly shows the partial reflection and refraction of the ray? We have to choose which one is the correct. Let me copy it from here and take it into the paint so we can work on it. Okay, these, these questions, these amplitudes of the light, you have to work on them, actually. I mean, you have to use your uh, scale and protector and do what the technique I'm telling you. Okay, let's check the first diagram. Let me draw a normal here. Oh, oh, this is the norm. Check. For reflection, the angle of incidence clearly is more than angle of reflection. They should be. So A cannot be the answer. Okay? So let's try on the B. Let's try. Draw normal. The angle of incidence is greater and angle of reflection is smaller. That cannot be the answer. So B is rejected. That cannot be the correct. Let me draw a normal. If you, if you, if then you will draw the normal on the diagram, I have also tried to draw a normal here. You will check the angle of incidence. Then you check the angle of incidence. This is the angle of incidence. And this is the angle of reflection. They both will be equal. So that thing is good. Okay, next step. The light entered from glass into air. So the light should bend away from the normal. But look at the light. It bent it towards the normal. That's wrong. It should have bent it away from the normal. It bent it towards the normal. When the light enters from the glass into the air, it should bend away from the normal. So C is wrong. Let me draw a normal in the figure. So here I draw a normal in the figure D. Angle of incidence, when you will measure it, angle of reflection, they are equal. That's good. So when light entered from glass into the air, it should have banded it banded away from the normal. So both aspects are good in the figure D. So what's the right choice? D is perfectly right. D. What do you say? Do you understand? Sir, C explain kardein, galat kyun because angle of incidence, angle of reflection were equal to each other, that thing is good. But when light entered from glass into the air, the light bended here towards normal, which is wrong. When light enters from glass into air, it should bend away from the normal. That's why it's wrong. Sir, a bend away hi nahi ho rahi. Matlab, kam ho rahi, lekin bend away hi nahi ho rahi. Let me show you the path of the light. This, the blue color line I will draw is the original path of the light. This is the original path of the light. Did it bend it? Away from oh, the okay, sir, the okay, sir. okay, okay. So uh, that was uh, so the D is the right choice for this question. For question number twenty-two, D is the right choice. I hope you have understood how we decided. Oh, now we have a question. Question number twenty-three: An object five centimeter high is placed two centimeter from a converging convex lens which is being used as a magnifying glass 
The image produced is 6 cm from the lens and is 15 cm high. What is the focal length of the lens? Okay, let me... Uh, even this question, you know, you have to actually, actually, actually use a scale and a projector and pencil and draw the line, draw, draw the ray diagram, okay? And then you will be able to decide what is the answer. Okay. So, So this is that diagram. So what I will do, I will join, this is the image and it's a virtual image, you know. The image and the object are already given. What we will do, we will, we will prolong this line behind the mirror. Okay. Join it with the head of the image. Okay. And then this point where it touched the lens, I will prolong it behind the mirror and this blue line should touch the head of the, okay. Then the same blue line I join this point where this parallel to the principal axis ray touched the lens. I join this point with the head of the image with the blue color line. So in a single stroke of with the your pencil, with the help of scale, you can join this point and the head of the image. Draw a line. So this blue line when intersected the principal axis, see what is the reading there? What is the reading there? Three. And this should be the axis. This is the focal point. This should be the. So the focal length is from optical center. From optical center, in the, the focal length is what? The focal length is from the optical center till the. So, what is the focal length? Three. Three, sir. Three, three centimeters. So, do you understand how do I, I have drawn this green line and the blue line? The procedure, do you understand that? Yes, sir. Sir, to hum arrow ke niche se kyun nahi lines leke gaye? Kaun sa arrow? Which arrow you are talking? Jo two pair object. The image location in the convex lens and the concave lens. If you have uh, attended those lectures and if you have seen the videos, lecture which I uploaded in the YouTube, if you have seen them, in none of them, in none of them. The light ray passed from the bottom of the object. All the rays which I taught you, they always uh, start from the head of the object. Okay. To locate the image, we always use two or three rays. They both start from the head of the object. The ray number one starts from the head of the object, moves parallel to the principal axis, comes in the lens, convex lens, then it passes from the focal point here. The other ray, ray number two, starts from the head of the object and passes from the optical center and goes undeviated. Because okay, on sir. this side, these two rays are merging, so they will not intersect. So I will prolong them behind the lens where they intersect. There the image will come. In this case, the image was already given to me. You understand? Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, yeah, okay. That's good. So the focal length is three. Go back to the question. So what is the option? What is the option? 
B, sir. B is the right option. Okay. Uh, just two questions. Uh, let me show you. Question number 23. A man is short sighted. Which ray diagram shows what happens when he looks at a distant object? I think I have not taught you the defects in the eye yet. Uh, on Monday, we will learn about this. But a uh, short sighted person is a person who can see the near objects clearly and far away objects he cannot see clearly. And the defect is the, the lens of his eye bent the light rays too much. Okay? They bend the light rays too much. So the lights, the light rays are not focused on the retina of the eye. They, they cross each other or focus before the retina. So that is, uh, we will study about this. So C is the choice. You are not confident. C is the right choice. Okay? You, in biology, you might have studied it. Yes, sir. So short-sighted person, C is that image which shows a short-sighted person. Okay. Question number 25 is on your screen. Which color, red or blue, has a higher frequency? And which has a longer wavelength? You remember that code word I told you? Raiji yes, Bim. Raiji. So the blue will have higher frequency and the red will have longer wavelength. Blue will have the higher frequency and the red will have the longer wavelength. If you remember the order of the colors in the spectrum, that is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Roy G. Biv. R-O-Y-G-B-I-V. Roy G. Biv. In this order, when you move downward, the frequency increases. In this order, when you move downward, the wavelength decreases. So the blue, which is below the red in that order, will have higher frequency, and the red, which is above the blue, will have longer wavelength. So what's the choice? B. B is the right choice. So thank you very much. See, this was summer 2008 paper. And today I think we have done uh, how many papers? Today we have done, I think, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008. And each paper have, I think, two or three questions on the topic of life. So we were working on the summer season, and uh, we are we are we have done the, the, the MCQs related with the light topic is reflection and re refraction. So we thank you very much. And my name is Farhan Mother. Today is 9th October 2020, and I was with the nine uh, 10 Cambridge class, and we were studying about. Uh, MCQs of the reply. God bless you, Deep.